this episode, musician and meditative animal Nick Marisola and I came up with a few sketch ideas. Just, I like the idea of just someone so chill, so in tune with uh, not being flummoxed that no matter what the situation is, they're a okay with it. You know, we were talking about dealing with feelings and using meditation for that. Yeah. And what if the uh, what if the feelings were like, oh, I'm I'm hungry. Like, how do you deal with the hunger? Oh, I'm thirsty. Like, how do you deal with the thirsty? Oh, I'm horny. Like, how do you deal with the horniness? And then the last one would be, I got to I got to poop. And like, how do you deal with it while you're meditating? Any- Buddhist glam, like like using the bragging, using all of that type of stuff, but in a with a Buddhist tilt. So it's like you're not like you're bragging about how enlightened you are or whatever it is. You know? Which one did we pick? You'll find out on this episode of... It's a Sketch Comedy Podcast Show. Welcome to Sketch Comedy Podcast Show, the one-of-a-kind show where I, Stuart Rice, invite interesting people to have intriguing conversations and then improvise a comedy sketch based on what we talked about. It's the only show like it on the internet. Nick Marisola is a dudist, and what that means is really kind of up to you. Uh, Take some philosophy from Buddhism and some from the dude, mix them up, and you kind of get a sense of what that means. It's wonderful, and I think I'm a convert. When not preaching dudism, Nick is a musician who goes by the name Meditative Animal and recently released his latest album, Alternative Phenomena, which, if you're a fan of Jack Johnson, you are going to love. Without any further ado, let's get right into my conversation with the meditative animal himself, Nick Marisola. Hey, Nick. Yeah. Thanks for being on the show. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, Thanks a lot for having me, Stuart. Absolutely. Uh, I have a really quick question to ask you. All right. What makes you interesting? What makes me interesting? Well, let's see. Uh, Maybe. Hmm. Jeez. (laughs) Uh, It's not an easy question. You know, I could have a lot of answers to that or I could I could. uh, I could play kind of coy and be like, well, my relationship with nothingness might be the most interesting part. So technically nothing makes me interesting. Fair enough. Now do the, now do the braggadocio. (laughs) All right. That was my kind of Buddhist monk type style response. Uh, (laughs) But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of a Renaissance man, I guess. I have a few different uh, um, skill sets or talents or gifts, whatever you want to call them. Um, Artist, musician, philosopher uh i don't know i i personally think my take on religion might be one of the most interesting parts of me though well let's let's start there now you i i i'm i don't want to be presumptive here but did you start a religion or is this no uh no okay tell us about tell us about that though all right uh okay so the only religion technically that i'm uh, legally and officially, bureaucratically associated with is uh, this religion called Dudism. It's actually a parody religion based on the movie The Big Lebowski and the character of the dude. And uh, originally, I had gotten ordained because one of my best friends and his his wife, who was also a good friend, uh, they wanted me to be the minister at their ceremony, and conveniently enough, in the cool state of Maine, they let you register as a Dudist priest and conduct the ceremony legally. So I hopped on that real fast because it fit me like a glove. That's um, uh, th- that's amazing. It's, kind of a, it's 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 you know, uh, uh, you can take it as seriously as you want to, but uh, it's supposed to be at least taking itself light, lightly enough to still have a sense of humor about even itself as a religion. Sure. Because um, the character of the dude in the movie, if, you, if you've ever seen it, is kind of an anti-hero. Like yeah, the opposite yeah. of what you'd expect from a heroic 
lead man, you know, in a movie, but he's like this welfare, uh, Tai Chi, alcohol drinking, marijuana smoking guy. And he's, he, he's a bit of a pacifist who uh, gets himself in trouble. And it's, it's just funny the ways it all works out. Um, so I don't know if you haven't seen it, I would uh, big, big recommendation from me, the big Lebowski, check it out sometime. You'll probably understand the religion of Dudism a lot better than I could ever explain it. But <laughs> it's a little bit of a blend of uh, kind of Zen Buddhist ideals mixed with some kind of Taoist ideals. The Tao Te Ching, for those of you who don't know, just translates as the way of virtue. It's kind of like this uh, Asian philosophical poetry book of wisdom. Um that even shoots itself in the foot on purpose, which I like about it. I always tell people my favorite thing about being a Taoist is not being a Taoist. Sure. Yeah. Which if that you totally know anything makes about Taoism makes perfect sense. Yeah. That's great. I love it. Thanks. I love it. Now, how does, uh, how does that affect your like day to day life? Do you, does it, does it change your perspective on things? Do you look at things through a different lens because of the big Lebowski? Which I, mean, I, I totally understand. <laughs> I personally can relate to a lot of things about him. Like I, I, I uh, like a responsible kind of casual, low key uh, consumption of alcohol as a recreational or medicinal or sacramental whatever. Same with uh, my my cannabis use. I use that. Uh, I'm into shamanism too, so I also use tobacco, uh, which I don't think he, he does in the movie, but that's my own kind of spin on it. But uh, the the whole, I try to have a sense of humor. One of my, Some of my biggest heroes in religion are the ones with a sense of humor, like the Laughing Buddha. And uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of this modern day Buddha named uh, Osho, who was out in India. But uh, I read a couple couple of his things, and I've 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 heard him speak. And at the end of one of his books, uh, I think it was called uh, "Book of Wisdom" or the book a book of wisdom or something like that. Anyways, the last chapter, his grand finale was uh, the title of it was "Be a Joke Unto Yourself," and I thought that was one of the most enlightening things I have ever heard. Yeah, I, I mean, I should probably, I kind of adopt a similar thing, but I'm kind of a joke to everybody, which yeah, is maybe try, taking I it to figured, a different level. <laughs> yeah, I actually, to tell you the truth, I can relate to to that stuff, but uh, in all honesty, I'm trying to even up the ante a little bit, and I figure if there's already a laughing Buddha, why can't there be a comedian Duda? Yeah, absolutely. Maybe that's my own spin on it. I love it. I love yeah. it. Um, now, how do you, uh, is there a way you kind of like share your message of dudism? Um, um, most, I try not to really be preachy about it. That's kind of part of the, the motif. It's almost like, uh, take it if it's, if it jives with you type of thing. So I kind of try to approach that and be sensitive of all the diversity and, um, you know, individuality and uniqueness of everyone's subjective perspectives. So I try not to like shove my, my anything religious necessarily down someone's throat with my music and my lyrics. That's probably my biggest way. I may actually, I write some philosophy papers as a hobby and I may write a, a philosophy of religion or maybe even try and intersect science and religion in a philosophy paper later down the road, but I haven't done that yet. Yet, yet. Um, but so, but it this is on my. It's been on my uh, agenda for a while. Oh, absolutely. Um, so it does not make its way into your your artistic endeavors. Oh no, it should. It, it the should. Dudism, right? The dudism is almost. Um, <coughs> let's see. Uh, I wouldn't say that's necessarily, I, I, I only take that sort of seriously. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, for me, I'm, I, I take my Zen, I try to take it as seriously as I should is how I would put that. Okay. Um, cause I'm kind of a lay Zen monk. I've, I've taken a, uh, 
like a vow. I'm not part of like a organized sangha or uh, monkhood necessarily in a stereotypical fashion. I kind of see the world as my temple and my house as my little, my little own personal temple. And uh, um, I, I'm very every day av- like you, you might, you probably wouldn't realize I, I, I take it that seriously. If you just saw me on the street, you know, I'd probably, you'd probably think I'm just another stoner. <laughs> but, uh, um, I, uh, but I think anybody who's achieving like some sort of a Zen, like uh peace with themselves kind of comes off as a stoner. Like, I just feel like th- there's a little bit of that that happens can, where you're just okay with everything. Yeah. They can go not very trying to hand fight. in hand. Yeah, you're not trying to fight what's happening around you. You're just observing it, and I, I that's that's where I mean, I, not to share too much, but that's where I start to get into my space of being able to be okay with things. Is when I maybe it is a substance that I'm taking, and it just gets me to wrap my head around it a little bit and not fear it. And I think that's the that is that the big thing with like getting to that point is just not fearing fearing everything, not feeling that fear. I don't know. You know, honestly, there's a couple there's different perspectives on that because sometimes fear can come along somewhat naturally psychologically if you're in a really awful situation, you know, or are presented with some awful potentials. It's not necessarily unzen to have that fear sweep through your mindset, but the Zen part to me is more the keep staying staying in your own kind of zone and not letting it overpower you and and reining in back in your own control, whatever little degree that is, so that you do whatever you should about that fear. And I mean, if you look at the Shaolin Temple, the original Zen Temple, they're they're known for their martial arts, even though, you know, they're probably the least likely out of anyone to start a fight. Right. But they can finish a fight, which is. Yeah, because (laughs) they they also know that it's not all about sitting under a under a Bodhi tree. Right. Yeah. And I, um, I, I think it's it's important to realize, like feeling those feelings, like getting that fear, getting that anger, getting that whatever it is, is not having those feelings is very human. Like we have them for a reason. And it's what you do with that energy. It's what you do with those feelings. And I think I, having those things pass through me, that's been the thing that has really helped me as an adult is just feeling the feeling, let it pass through. And then at the end of it, like you can go have a sandwich and feel okay about it again, you know? Yeah, that's that's kind of like the, um, I, I would say there are, I, I, I would be uh, maybe concerned enough to clarify that there are some kind of advanced tactics within Zen and uh, even just the science of psychology and stuff where you can kind of transmute things as they come instantaneously so that maybe you don't feel the fear in the same way. Maybe you're aware that you could be deathly afraid, but you're so busy dealing with it constructively that you don't want to waste your own psychological space on fear. Instead, you'd rather use all your resources with the help of that kind of Zen being in the zone, mental optimization thing, uh, or with the help of that, you can, there are advanced tactics. That might be why you associated like the fear with maybe not being as Zen, but uh, that can be very Zen in the beginning. Sometimes the beginning of the path, uh, if you will, if, if someone's on a path uh, can be facing those fears correctly instead of running from them. Sometimes you're supposed to run away from a fear and maybe you're scared of yourself for a reason because you shouldn't be that way. And that's what it teaches you. And it was actually a good thing even for that person. But- yeah. Ab- yeah. I, I, I completely agree with you. I, um, those advanced tactics would be, I, I think everybody has a perception of like Buddhism as someone sitting on a rock with their legs crossed with their, you know, their fingers like this 
and just totally at peace with everything. And it's like, yeah, that's the end goal. But the, the journey there is being able to handle all of those things and being able to use like those things that you're talking about, the tactics that you're talking about, where it's like, how do you get your mind into that space where you can start to process those things? I, I, I think it's, it's remarkable. I think Buddhism is probably one of, or dudism is probably one of the, uh, one of the like most misunderstood things. Like people think it's a, a, a full on religion and it's, it doesn't, no, it's, it's compatible it's really with so many a, different things. It's really more of like, if you look at the theme of it, uh, like the point of it is do the right thing. Yeah. Same as Taoism, the way of virtue. Like sometimes you can read a book by its cover. Um, and really it's almost more like the kind of the unified theory of all the different religions. Cause you can be Buddhist. I, I personally consider, I was raised Christian. Sure. Um, my dad was like raised Roman Catholic and uh i i can i try and take the good in uh, that i see in every religion so i i'm even hesitant to necessarily call myself a, a zen buddhist to someone who doesn't understand that about buddhism right like it's kind of like we're the ambassadors to all the religion we're like <laughs> hey, the theme song uh symphony you know yeah yeah absolutely absolutely but um, so you do, I, I, I could talk about that all day, but let's get into some of the other things that you do. So you are sure. an artist and you do uh, music and yeah. your, mu your music is incredibly good. Now, oh, if uh, for, I, I like it a lot and if you're into more of like, um, I don't even know how I would describe it. Is it sort of like it's, it's a rocky, folksy, I don't know. It's, it's kind of like, it's a better version of Jack Johnson, if I can say that. Oh, thanks, Jeez. Yeah. Uh, oh, I don't know if you I wear shoes, but I don't know if that makes the difference, but it's good. Heroes are complimented. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I, I, everybody likes Jack Johnson. There's nobody, everybody is in a Starbucks at some point. Jack Johnson comes on and everybody kind of bobs their head. Yeah. That's yep. what happens. Um, I, I kind of like yours. It's a little bit more, the, the ly lyrically more interesting, if I can thanks. say that. Yeah. So, um, and of course, right now on the thing, I've got the uh, meditative animal. If you go to YouTube, type in meditative animal, one word, uh, you'll go and see all of Nick's stuff. But what speaking what, of lyrics, there's some lyric videos up there right now that are kind of cool, I think. Yeah, that's why it was so nice because I could w watch the video, get the lyrics, and it, it, I could do both. I could enjoy the music and get the the lyric uh, density as well. Yeah, I tried to um, make it visually interesting too. I figure if it's going to be in video format, you might as well try and take advantage of that. Yeah, that's why I try to do this with this. I um, I, that's cool. I wish I had more special effects, but mm. um, oh, there I just had a blur. So there we go, special effects. Um, what is what got you into music and and what inspires you for what you do as far as musically do, like what inspires those lyrics what inspires the music all right that's kind of a couple questions and a little complex so give me a sec uh, yeah parse it out however it works <laughs> out <laughs> all right so uh i've i've been singing uh, like i was in church choir growing up they made me go to all the church ccd sunday school all that jazz until it was time to get confirmed and i was like uh, i i think i'll pass but anyways uh i i'm i'm all cool with jesus nowadays but whatever it wasn't i was too scientific back then for that type of uh whatever i mean but let's anyways, face it you could be a, you could be a fan of jesus and not even a fan of christianity oh because, yeah of course maybe yeah, even jesus had all the good what stuff jesus like, is right now if i had my guess but yeah um totally yeah so i was i was doing choirs in school and church all growing up played a little bit of cello in uh fourth grade and then we moved and they didn't have a cello program at the next school so i kind of gave up on that but uh um, I actually was more of an art kid and uh, a little bit of a poet um, growing up. Um, I got really into meditation and shamanism and I was hanging out with all these hippies in college because I went to Burlington, Vermont, University of Vermont, which I don't know if you know, but it's basically like the hippie Mecca this side of the Mississippi. 
So it's the uh, it's the East Coast Berkeley. Uh, I would even say maybe uh, or like Boulder or like oh, okay. uh, Portland, Oregon, or somewhere yeah. of that vein. Um, Those are my people. Yeah. Oh, me too. <laughs> I went there for the people. I I I love the school, great education, and everything. But that's not why I went there. Right. Right. I had other options, but uh, anyways. Um, so I get to school, I'm hanging out with all these hippies and getting into my Zen and my shamanism. And I wanted to kind of up the ante with my music. I figured I just felt like I could, ins- it was a different way to express complex ideas that are really hard to express in one piece of art sometimes. Like, I just felt like I could get a- so much done in one well-crafted song between the combination of the lyrics and the music um i i felt like it at least was a different perspective on it that you could relate to in a different way than a, a piece of visual art so i started playing guitar and hand drums and writing songs at about 18 and uh i i decided i wanted you know, I wanted that to be one of my main focuses in life to kind of try and provide. I was fed up with what I considered a basically pop garbage at the time. Mm. It was like whatever made money, the bitches and hoes and bling, bling, bling stuff was, I mean, I get it and everything. I'm not stupid, but I felt like there was, why is that stuff the most popular stuff when there's so much cooler stuff out there to talk about, let alone uh, sing about. Um, I, so I, I wanted to put out some, you know, some some worthwhile stuff, maybe some in, in, insightful stuff that people hadn't thought of, because I tend to be a little bit of an outside-the-box thinker, and maybe I've considered things in ways that other people haven't, or even if they have. Maybe it's, I know for me, it's sometimes really validating just to hear someone else validate your own opinion in different words or even in the same words you know yeah i i I, I agree i believe that other people have uh, most of us have the same end goal right we're all trying to make ourselves happy and try to live live our lives and and have it be as easy as possible and we do we just need to hear somebody else that's that's why i think people go to churches i think it's why people go and and listen to people like uh, who's big hand guy? Uh, uh, any of the like? Uh, God, what's the guy's name with the big hands? Never mind. Anyway, so it's uh, that's gonna drive me nuts. <laughs> anyway, but uh, but like we go and we listen to to people who are inspirational speakers. We watch TED talks. We all of those things because we want to find somebody that's going to reiterate what we're trying to to achieve in our lives out loud so that we can we can be validated yeah it's almost I, like the science of 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 you know uh, uh of the meaning of life or or the of uh, of our personalities like personality science is not as simple or as objective or sterile as most people's uh perceptions of your average scientist you know a personality scientist is probably all about that that makes i bet that makes perfect sense to some of them oh absolutely and if, I mean, like if the, you've ever the science done of it, being human almost yeah it is it is the science of being human and i think it's a and it's those um and, and we tend to be drawn to people that have the same beliefs as we are that's why you know it, we we look for those groups. We look for those 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 tribes so that we can be a part of them. Um, and I it's kind of cool when you can get behind something such as Dudism or a, a musical artist. Like my I wrote a, a college paper on how world peace would be achieved if everybody was a David Bowie fan. Oh, nice! Because I, can uh, imagine. I felt. Yeah, because I felt then that way everybody would have a common ground to like base everything off of and then move on from there, right? Like if you, it, you could have an argument about anything, but you could be like, <laughs> but you know, Moon Age David Daydream. <laughs> right? Hold on a sec. What would David Bowie think? Yeah. Well, would <laughs> WWDBT, <laughs> right? Like that's, that's exactly what we would have. Um, 
cool. And so you you make music, and that kind of helps you, you know, like get out uh, like a lot of those feelings. And what about your other artwork, your other art? Like you do. What, what um, I, ha- I haven't do? I haven't really done a a ton of art in a little while because I've kind of been focused on the the music stuff for a while because I actually was kind of one of the art kids, not a music kid growing up. For the most right. part, I took every art class my high school had, and then some. I was develop I was designing my own classes by junior and senior year in high school. That's um, cool. And then I went. I was an art major at UVM. I dropped out of college a million times, went to a million different art schools and school. I, I even did some herbal medicine school. Um, but yeah, my art, uh, I, man, I, um, I'm kind of like, uh, my two artistic heroes, I guess I would say, my biggest ones are MC Escher and Salvador Dali. Uh, I'm, my favorite stuff that I've done of my own is almost like a MC Escher meets Salvador Dali. Oh, that's with, very with cool. kind of my own style to it. Sure. Yeah, I, um, um, I and sometimes I I have this idea for my music. This is w- one idea I'm going to be working on in the future. Um, I, I'm thinking. I've illustrated poems before in a piece of artwork um, uh, in that similar style, you know, where it's almost like a concept map uh, or tells a story um, within the imagery. And I'm thinking about doing something like that, at least a piece of art for a song or maybe an album or maybe all of them eventually. And I'm thinking of even doing some... uh, um, some time lapses and video recording of the making of the art as it goes along and running that, making videos on YouTube of the actual illustration of the lyrics and the music being made right before your eyes as the music plays. That's one of my big projects for the future. I think that's awesome. That's Thanks. sort of like I'm those really doodly videos, right? Like where people are do- drawing on a whiteboard to their talk, but I think that would be really remarkable if the music was playing and you saw like the piece of art being created that accompanied that, accompanied that. That's, that's good. Yeah, that's think, good art stuff, man. I think it could be really interesting too, considering so too. that I'm kind of like the, it's the same brain doing all that stuff too. So yeah, it's almost like we're totally fleshed out way beyond like totally integrated one area of that artistic venture. Yeah, totally integrated. I, I love that concept. Thanks. Um, your most recent album is Alternative Phenomena. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, where is where is that available? Is that available everywhere? Um, pretty much all the streaming platforms. And then it's available at my website for streaming or download. There's actually a fan set the price, anything from zero up. Um. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, at meditativeanimal.com. Yeah. So, yes, everybody needs to head there, download the album. Um, I'm going to suggest the uh, purchase price of $15 for oh, everybody. Wow. Yeah. And it, I mean, if you can't pay that, I understand. Pay whatever you can. But I think it's important to have uh, independent artists like you and myself. I think we need to get rewarded for what we do. And I, I your music is it's it's really good like it's incredibly good it doesn't sound like you smoke a lot on your album I do. Thanks, <laughs> you have a good voice Isn't i like funny? it yeah <laughs> um <laughs> um and so ha- have you toured like i know you're not on a tour right now but I, have you toured in the past and have no you play- i haven't done tours i've played a, a handful of shows over the years and i've played a bajillion open mics and even more for free on the streets I actually yeah. got most of my stage fright or whatever it was out of my system by going to the beach and playing in front of a couple hundred people and trying not to get kicked out. <laughs> a couple hundred people is a lot of people to do anything in front of. Yeah, That's, right? It, it's yeah. enough to give even a good musician some butterflies. I found yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. Um and uh, so, any stories like when when you were playing music? Has anybody has it touched anybody in particular, or has it? 
Oh man, uh, is there a me- me- memorable moment like live? Yes, performing anything live is always wild. So. One of my favorite things of all time. I uh, I lived right down uh, by a beach in Maine, and I would go down to the beach and play for free. And uh, it was funny because when I moved away, the cops asked my mom, they were like, where's Nick? We got no music at the beach. <laughs> but they wouldn't let me get paid for it either. They wouldn't let me open my case. Um, really? They told me they'd call the cops on me and have me arrested if I did it. Because I did it one time not knowing. And I made about 30 bucks with my buddy in about 15 minutes. But uh, then some some uh, authority figure showed up and kindly let me know that that was not kosher. Can you but put anyways, up a sign that says Venmo part, me? <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> they won't even let you do that. But, um, That's my favorite part, my one of my favorite memories of all time was I was down there at the beach playing for free, just my own songs. Nobody knows these songs. That's part of what made it a challenge for me because I don't play cover songs really almost at all, and so nobody knows these songs. So they better be good enough that people are willing to at least listen to them once. I figure, yeah, or at least not throw an egg at me. Um, right. <laughs> And uh, so I'm down there playing, and there's this little, wicked cute little freaking, I don't know how old he was. He must have been somewhere between, like, I would say maybe four years old and seven years old. Um, he's at the beach. He's he's listening to my music. I can see him bopping his head, and um, he, he starts gathering these rocks, and he assembles these rocks in front of me that spell out the Pied Piper of Maine. And I thought that was so wow. cool. I'm like, I'm like this mythological figure to this little kid. It was, it was hilarious. That's that's amazing. It was that's, heartwarming. Oh, totally. That really, stuff like that makes it all worthwhile. Another one of my favorites was when a, my, one of my friends' uh, uh, little kids didn't know it was me. I was showing the album to uh, my friends and their family, and they have this little kid who's he can be. Um, kind of tricky to deal with i will say to be politically correct and everything about it but uh uh, if i wanted to be a dickhead i could say he might even like to be compared to dennis the menace sometimes or something but sure anyways he's got he's got his reasons there's even some medical stuff going on that i don't want to get into but anyways we're we're playing it for him and he's bopping his head and he didn't even know it was me and then they're they're like did you know that's Nick on the radio right now? And he's like, wow, cool. That was touching, too, for a little kid to be dancing, see him bopping his head to my music, not even knowing it's me. Yeah. Totally not pandering to anything other than his own sheer enjoyment of it. Oh, that's... That was gold. That is gold, and that's... That's better than getting paid, in my opinion. Absolutely. I mean, it's also good to get paid, but Oh, don't also... get me wrong. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I don't do it for the money, honestly. I... I, uh, I, I I almost avoid that sometimes on purpose. Sure, because it can get it can cloud up what you're trying to do, right? Like, yeah, and pretty, so, pretty soon you're some like, of the life out of it. Yeah, exactly. Pretty soon you're like, well, what what uh, famous rapper can I get uh, to to work with so that I can get some get paid? <laughs> Tell us about what's coming up for you. <laughs> oh yeah, all right. Well, I don't know if he'd call it working with me, but. I got this opportunity to to purchase a beat with a feature from uh, uh, Kill a Priest from the Wu Tang Clan, and um, I added some uh, harmonica and some hand drums, a little whistling, and it's gonna be my hip hop debut as a uh, a bit of an MC too. So that should be interesting. That's that's probably the next uh, on my agenda of releases. We'll see when that gets done. I'm trying to get some more female singers on it really kind of rounded out a little that's awesome yeah yeah I think i'm that's, really psyched though yeah that that is something to be very excited about yeah and yeah, i'll yeah. tell you that, something they're else living legends yes oh my goodness <laughs> some of my faves mm. um all Me right too. so let's do something else that's going to be epic we need to record a sketch okay i'm game all right Nick, this has been great so far. Hey, do me a favor. Tell everybody how they can go listen to your music and find out more about you. If you're looking for some uh, music with a timeless original sound, great vibes, 
some wise, insightful lyrics, all poetically crafted to let you form your own relationships with it. Check out Meditative Animals Music online. Uh, it's mostly online right now. It is uh, a little bit on the radio, uh, certain independent stations around the world, and you might catch it in certain stores in the background. Um, but if you want, go to my website, meditativeanimal.com. There's plenty more there. And keep your uh, eyes and ears peel peeled for more in the future. And now our sketch. Dudetation in three, two. Enter the Duda. Oh my gosh, this temple is crazy. I, look at all the guitars on the wall. Yeah, it's almost like I'm a musician or something. Weird, huh? Yeah, yeah. Are they... Are those sound panels in the shape of a, a Buddha up there? Does the Buddha have a shape? Oh, you're already starting to blow my mind, man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I want to learn more. Can you explain Dudaism to me? Uh, my own special blend, of course, is uh, unique and rare and uh, completely customized. Technically, it only matters to me. Can we meditate together? Would that be something we could do? We can always meditate together. How do we do this? Don't be a raging douchebag. Okay. Follow that train of thought the whole way through and achieve Dudaism. Okay, don't be a douchebag. Got it. Yeah. Okay, all right. It's a cardinal sin to a dudist. Okay. Because right. this aggression will not stand, man. Understood. Is there any other rules that we should be following? Yes. The dude always abides. Any other rules that we should know about? So I would recommend having a heart metaphorically in every situation because you do. All right. Well, I will abide. Okay. Well, I feel like I've got, I've got a lot of feelings and I'd like to kind of address them as we're meditating here. Is that, is that something oh, we can do? That would probably be the best way to do it while you're meditating. Okay, all right, so how do we start? Do we have to make any noise? Do we do an om or what, are, what do we do? Hey, silence is golden too. Okay, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna think of nothing and I'm gonna say the first feeling that I've got. All right. Mm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I'm actually feeling hungry. What should I do about that? Well, there's a famous Zen parable, kind of starry-eyed wannabe comes up to a Zen master and he tells him about this amazing miracle worker who can stand on one edge of a canyon and someone across the canyon will hold up a piece of paper and he can paint a picture on it from across the canyon without even touching it. The Zen master responds to him and he says, my miracle is when I'm hungry, I eat. That sounds like sound advice. All right, let me, let me see if I can process any more feelings. All right. All right. Oh. oh, man, this is so weird. I'm feeling horny. Interesting. I don't know why. You're a good looking dude, but I don't know why. I don't. <laughs> love is love and to each their own and all that jazz. I personally love making love with the right people and under the right circumstances. Not to rain on your parade. I, I happen to be straight myself. Being more horny than you are soulful. Your heart and soul are probably the best to put in control of your pole. All right, well, I feel like I've got more feelings I'd like to release. Mm, let me just feel what I'm feeling. I feel like I got a poop. Interesting. Dudism respects all religions, and the first thing that comes to mind is if all these monotheistic religions claim that man was made in God's image, then I would just let you know that God poops, my friend. God poops, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for Sketch Comedy Podcast Show. We hope you enjoyed listening as much as we enjoyed making it. Sketch Comedy Podcast Show is protected under Creative Commons Attribution No Derivatives 4.0 International License. Now I'm rushing through this because Nick's got a great message for you. And if you wait till the end, you'll actually get to listen to some of his wonderful music. Make sure you click on that in the link below. If you're enjoying it, go listen to more of his stuff. It is great. Love you, man. Much love and many blessings for everybody out there.
the way you moved along, the way you sing your song, it inspired me to say. I hope we meet again, I hope I make you grin, I hope your life works out your way. I truly do, my friend, hope this is not the end, cause it will be too soon for me. inspired me to come up with uh, my own name for myself, which is a Duda, which might fit that one. If you wanted me to explain that or you wanted to run with that a little, maybe you could work that in. Like uh, uh, I could explain what being a Duda means because I feel weird about that. It's almost like, you know, you hit a point of spiritual evolution and you can't help but notice certain advanced properties but some of these same advanced properties are like trying to shoot themselves in the foot because you're th like hot. <laughs> what are you supposed to do? Make humble pie? Like, yeah. What, at the same time, what are you supposed to do? Just shoot yourself in the foot? Yeah. So I, uh, that's part of why I named myself a Duda. Cause uh, I figured I'll, uh, I'll call myself an ass before they can. And um, it's funny because in Sanskrit, it actually means milk or milked, which is also interestingly Lebowski. But I think every oh, American yeah. would assume that it means Duda. 